Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. Um, today's tutorial is going to be the first tutorial in a little series that I'm going to be doing on vector art. Um, I've had a lot of people asking me about this recently, um, various different questions about how to produce vector art. Um, so, although it's not really my strong point, it is something that I'm going to try and take you through from a very kind of beginner orientated um, starting point. I'm going to assume you know nothing and then we're just going to kind of move through. Um, I'm going to point you first to this tutorial here. Um, that's called Vectorland GIMP Tutorial uh, by this user, uh, Rafs000. Uh, um, this is an awesome and awe-inspiring video, and if you watch this video, you'll see just what is actually possible with the GIMP, and it's well worth watching this all the way through, and I'm going to put a link into it um, in the video description. Um, so just click on More Info and you'll find this video. Um, but in order to create the artwork that he creates in this video, um, you need to know a lot of the basics first and this tutorial is very good but you it goes through at breakneck speed and there's no explanations he doesn't really explain what he's doing and you have to watch it absolutely perfectly so we're going to take it a lot slower and um, it's going to be several videos worth of tutorials but hopefully by the end of it by the end of the series um, you might be able to start producing the kind of work that he's been creating the sort of work that you can find on deviant art in fact, we're going to be talking about DeviantArt in a later video. Um, but this is going to be baby steps. So this one might not be relevant for you, but we'll get there eventually. Anyway, so today's tutorial is actually going to be on the Paths tool. Now, this rubbish little logo that I've done for the Paths tutorial um, was actually created using the Paths tool. Um, so if I just quickly show you what we've got. Um, the Paths tool is this one up here. It looks kind of like a fountain pen with um, a curve and some anchors and handles and things like that. Um, this is what we use to create and edit paths, as we're told, with that little uh, little label. And you can see that in brackets next to it, or in parentheses next to it, um, we've got the shortcut key. So if you ever want a quick um, shortcut to get to the Paths tool, just press B on your keyboard and you'll get it. Now, most people will use the Paths tool for selection. In fact, a lot of people use it instead of the Intelligent Scissors as a kind of uh, selection tool. Personally, I don't think it's as good a selection tool as the Intelligent Scissors, um, but it's a very, very good drawing tool. Now, this was a very quick attempt at drawing the word Paths, um, but the way I drew it was actually by sketching out a path first. So I'm going to take you through that step by step, and as I do it, um, I'll explain what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just clear the background, so we don't need that and you'll notice that in your layers channels and paths doc and if you haven't got that then please see my layers uh, recovering lost docs tutorial um, in your layers channels and paths doc um, we've got our layers that we normally work with the paths actually works exactly the same almost um, as you draw more paths they'll appear the same way layers do you'll have the um, eyeballs to make it visible down this side and um, you can create new paths which we're going to do Okay, so we've got a new path there, which I can make visible, invisible, I can lock it to others, all the things we can do with a normal uh, layer. And we can move them up and down when we've got more than one, we can duplicate them. Um, this one's quite interesting, we can turn it into a selection, and we're going to look at that later in another tutorial. Um, we can also stroke the path, which is what we're going to look at today, and obviously you can delete them as well. So this is the tools you've got here. Now very simply, the way this tool works is by collect, uh, selecting points and as you select those points they'll be joined up so this is very simple just to draw lots of straight lines all joined up so if I do like a cubic S um, I've just done that just by clicking points and they've drawn um, they've drawn lines through those points automatically now these points are actually called anchors um, and you'll see that down the bottom um, it will say things like uh, click or drag the anchor uh, to create a new anchor. It will give you little instructions um, how to use this um, in that information bar at the bottom. Now if I want to make this a solid um, path, um, a closed path, then to do that I can't just click from this open one, this white anchor, to this purple one because all that will do is select the other anchor. If I want to join two points together I have to hover over um, a closed point and just press control and the icon will change and then when I click again it'll actually join it up rather than just selecting a new one. Now that's the very basics of how to draw those shapes. Um, the other interesting thing about paths where it gets a bit more technical is you can actually pull these out at any point and it will curve it. 
Now this is the bit that can get quite tricky because if you don't know what you're doing with this um, it can start to look quite awful. You'll notice that as I've pulled these out um, we've got our normal anchor points but we've also got these handles that have come out and what these handles will do is actually if I move those around it changes the angle that that line goes through the anchor point so you can change the value of the curve and if I hold down shift while I'm doing that both of the, anchor, uh, bro both of the handles on either side of the anchor point will move um, in perfect symmetry so if you want a smoother curve you actually want to hold down shift as you move around your um, handles so if I just play around with those, you see. Oh, now I've accidentally drawn a um, an anchor point there that I don't want. If I ever do that, the easiest way to get rid of it is simply by hovering over it, press Control and Shift, and you'll notice that the icon changes again. And when I click on it, it just gets rid of it. But if I move on this one, um, I can move this handle around again, and um, so I can just make smoother anchor points just by holding down Shift when I want it to be symmetrical. Um, and it gets those kind of little bumpy bits out which can look quite amateurish so that's a nice little trick um, and all I'm really going to invite you to do for the moment is just play around with the paths tool um, try and draw have a shape in mind to begin with and simply try to draw it um, using that so there we've got a kind of five so have a play around with the paths tool and then come back to this tutorial once you've um, got a shape that you do like you can actually draw that shape and you can get the GIMP to kind of fill it in for you um, and the way we do that is by clicking on stroke path now if you're still on your path tool and you click on your um, tool little option down here then you should be able to see all of these options if you don't see that then you'll need to open up the tab which is here and you'll want your add tab and you'll want the tool options um, but we've got the tool options already there so we don't need to do that um, to draw in over these lines very simply all you have to click on is stroke path or you can also click on this one here which is um, paint along the path it will do the same thing so if I just click on stroke path to show you what that will do um, this dialog will jump up um, I'm going to set my line width to 3 pixels and simply when I press stroke it just draws that in for us if I now make sure that this is invisible and then press M for move just to get rid of the path and um, you can see that it's drawn that path in for me so what I'm going to ask you to do just as a kind of practice for this tutorial um, very simply just play around with the paths tool on a white background see what you can draw and try and make a final kind of solid shape um, just follow these steps one by one and just try and make a very basic solid shape it can be numbers letters um, a very simple logo just play around with it change the angle of the curves um, get a feel for it and once you've done that um, hopefully the video that I put up in the, the next video will be a little bit more complicated and you'll start to see how you can apply some of these skills to creating vector art um, so we're going to look at making logos in the next video so just have a play around with this and then see where we go from there anyway thanks for watching this I know this is quite a boring tutorial at the moment but this is step one of many and I can't fit it all into one 10 minute vid so um, I would say I hope you enjoy this one, but I don't really think there's much to enjoy yet. But have a play around, have an experiment, and after all, that's really the way to learn. So have a play, and then we'll come back to this in a future tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you very soon.